Hey, Wheaton North, it's Mrs. Tirada again, talking to you about isotopes. Eventually we'll get some other teachers in here talking, but you're stuck with me for now. Uh, we talked a little bit about isotopes in the first video, uh, but we're going to go a little bit more in depth with it right now. So we talked already isotopes. Uh, atoms can have varying amounts of neutrons, and that leads to that average atomic mass on the periodic table. Uh, this is an example of the three most common hydrogen isotopes. Uh, to depict what kind of isotope we're dealing with, we have an isotope symbol. Uh, so the atomic number for hydrogen is always one, and that would be on the bottom. And the mass number for an isotope symbol goes on the top. And this is this will be a single, uh, a whole number integer, not the average, because whenever you have the isotope symbol, we're talking about one specific isotope atom. So you won't have the average. Um, and it'll be the specific mass number for the individual isotope. So if you look down here, all of these are hydrogen. So hydrogen always has one proton, so the number on the bottom is the same. And then the number on top differs based on how many protons and neutrons, based on how many neutrons the hydrogen isotope has. Um, one interesting thing to note about the isotope symbol, I don't know if it's interesting, in my opinion it's annoying. Uh, on the periodic table, the atomic number is on top, and on the isotope symbol, it's on the bottom. The mass is on the bottom in the periodic table, and it's on the top on the isotope symbol. Some genius decided to make that confusing eons ago. If I was in charge, they would have been the same, but I wasn't in charge. So, we just have to deal with it. And remember that they're switched in the isotope symbol. We talked a little bit about the most common isotopes in the first video, but here it is again in a little bit more detail. <clears throat> to figure out the most common isotopes of an atom in the world, uh, you need to take your average atomic mass on the periodic table, <clears throat> round it to the nearest whole number, subtract the number of protons, and that will lead you with the number of neutrons that most atoms will have. Uh, so when you look at these three isotopes of hydrogen, this one is the most common isotope for hydrogen because it has zero neutrons, which is the closest to the average atomic mass. Most isotopes are stable. They can exist with their different numbers of neutrons forever. Those neutrons are acting as a glue to help hold the, uh, the nucleus together. So we've got the different isotopes for magnesium that are out there that give us the average mass of 24.3. <clears throat> um, these isotopes are atoms, so they're going to do just what atoms do. In our last video, we said that atoms need to gain or lose electrons to be stable. So no matter which isotope of magnesium you have, they still have those two valence electrons that are hanging out there, making it slightly unstable, that are going to get ripped off by another atom and make it a positive two charge. So all of these isotopes will also be found as ions because they've interacted to become more stable. Uh, last thing on here are radioactive isotopes. We talked a little bit at the very beginning when we did that Rutherford experiment about radiation and radioactive particles getting emitted from nuclei. These are really, really big atoms that are unstable because of the number of nu uh, nu neutrons in them. Uh, we talked about the alpha particle particle that Rutherford used, uh, negative betas, gamma rays, aren't really anything but energy that come out. Um, and these are all from uh, radi radiation from unstable isotopes. We're going to do a lab, uh, in Mrs. Trotta's class at least, I think everybody else is doing them, uh, where we look at radioactive half-life. You've talked about this in biology as well, where if you start with a sample that has 100% radioactive, unstable um, isotopes of, a, of, a, of an element, <clears throat> they're going to start to randomly decay. And you never can predict when uh, each one of these will decay, but in after 50% of them have decayed, it's always a pretty standard um, amount of time, so we can start making predictions. So you talked in biology about radioactive dating, uh, where if you look at the percentage of isotopes that are still radioactive, 
to these stable atoms they have decayed into, which actually is a new element now because they're also losing protons a lot of times. Um, you look at those ratios and you can figure out how old a sample is. So that's how radioactive dating works. But you'll see this vocabulary parent isotope, daughter isotope in the lab that you're doing. So that's what you need to know about isotopes. You've got a worksheet to do, you've got this lab to do, and that will lead you to mastery in isotopes.